la 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 this is me singing the intro music because somebody said that my music belonged to them and until i get that straightened out la 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 welcome to artistic adventures we're going back to dolls and we're going to make a custom fake kalala doll so let's get started on part one this is the doll we're going to use in our transformation and I bought it on AliExpress. It's a little shorter than a typical, or well, an original Halala doll. This doll is about, let me make sure, she's about um, six and a half, just a little over six and a half inches tall. And Halalas are more like eight. And she has a movable body, which is really cool so we're gonna remake her and turn her into what looks more like a whole lot of doll to do that we're gonna take off her hair we're gonna take off her face we're gonna remove her clothing and we're just gonna totally remake her okay so the first thing I'm gonna do is cut off her hair and you think that the hair looks pretty good, but there's not much you can do with this hair because you see it's <laughs> it's just like the front and the back and it's pulled up over the huge bald spot. So we're just going to have to get rid of that and then we'll make our own hair. I like to do that because then it looks more realistic and... You can style it in a lot of different ways instead of just in ponytails. So, the first step is to get rid of the hair that we have here. And then we'll have to cut open her head and get rid of what's underneath. I know, it sounds horrible, right? But the other part of that is that I want to cut it open because you can have a really good part, which helps you to, you know, put a finished look on the hair if you don't have a way to get the hair inside of the head. So that's one of the reasons that I do that. I did it on my Monster High Dolls too, so. I know, blasphemy, but... As I've said before, my hands are very arthritic, and pulling that hair out is not for me. Okay. So, we did that part. Now, I want to cut part of the scalp off, and then we'll be able to get more inside. And I want to find my exacto knife, which is eluding me at the moment, as usual. Well, we'll use, we'll use this one. It's not the one I had, but... Now, I'm going to cut behind this because that's really near the front, and I just want to, I want to get rid of this hair, but I don't want to really cut into that, so we just want to really have access to that area, so... Cut kind of right inside of it. And then we can glue it right back on and you will never know the difference. Be careful not to cut yourself. That's why these videos are for adults. <laughs> Did you hear that YouTube? These videos are for adults. I'm really upset with video, with YouTube right now. It's like, first of all, they they email you and go, you know, blah, 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 you've done this wrong. But then there's no way to send them an email and say, wait, I think you've got this wrong or whatever because they don't really want to communicate with you. They just want to live in their little ivory tower and proclaim things. So 
So all these people out here that are making the money, don't kid yourself. They care nothing for you. Well, maybe if you had like a million viewers, they would, but I have about 3,500, 3,600 viewers. Yeah, something like that. And they don't care anything for me. I think I would have to get at least 100,000 before I got any sort of... Oh, oh, you have a problem from YouTube. By the way, these are hemostats that I bought. They're like for people who fish to use. But they work really great. I um, mean, if you can't get medical hemostats, check out Fishing Store or West Marine, which is where I got these. They're fishing section. And they have a really good grip to them and pull things like this out. And also, you know, they have some length to them that gives you a little bit of um, ability to get into hard to reach places. All right, so we've got that pulled out. And now we're going to pull out the center part, which we don't need. And I am going to do the hair, not right away, because I want to do the face first, but I want to do some parts of the, of the hair process to show you. So we can get into it. Kind of in a step-by-step -step process because what you want to do is not mess up something that you've just done. So, all right, so we have our, uh, our head here. Now, what I want to do is I want to make a split where this part is. Oh, I just punctured my finger. Like that. And also... That's, yep, that much is there. I want to go back to the center here, okay? That's the center. What we're going to do is put hair that comes out on either side, but it comes down underneath so that it looks like a real part. And then we'll be able to cover up, you know, the rest of the areas so that it looks more natural. So you don't want to glue that on right yet. I want to do the face part first. So to do that, what we're going to do is ignore the blood gushing from my finger. <laughs> yeah, be careful with the exacto. And then we're going to use some acetone. And I'm going to put it in this little cup. And then we'll just use our uh, Q-tips to get rid of this. And you can use Q-tip or cotton ball or whatever you want to use. Paper towel. <laughs> oh. Anyway, we just want to get rid of all the All the paint. Yeah, what the heck? Just dip it in there. Now, as I said, I've been making these with my own sort of logo to call them Little Nugget Dolls, which is just what they look like to me. Um, and they're not exactly like Halalas, but they're very, very similar in their facial structure. So, uh, that way I can get away from the licensing problems. I'm just going to put a little bit of water on the face to clean off the acetone. Mm. 
Okay. And then. I'm going to put down my trusty matte medium by Liquitex. And that will give us a good base for our painting. I've used up so many uh, paint brushes recently with all this silicone baby nonsense I've been doing. Once you use that, it's kind of hard to get the silicone off. So. This is just a base for the paints, whether, you know, paint or chalk or watercolor pencil, whatever. Uh, this is a great base to A, protect the vinyl from color so that if you wanted to take it off later you can also to give the vinyl some grip or as you call it tooth so that especially when you're doing things like um, chalk or pastels it'll stick to it better and create a better color more uh, rich color and this tends to dry pretty flat on its own. It's sort of level, self-leveling, as they say. And I'm going to put at least about three coats on and then let it dry overnight. And that way, when we start working with it, we'll have a nice base. All right. So we'll come back after we've done all that. So we put it on about three coats, very thin coats, and let it dry overnight. And I'm going to start working with some watercolor pencils. And uh, please excuse the fact that there are going to be times when this picture is not in focus. I told you I have a new, a new camera on my last video. And I think it's supposed to be autofocus, but I think... Like if I focus on her face and then I put my hand over the camera to draw it, like then it focuses on my hand. And then when I go back to the doll, it's not focused on the doll. I don't know. But anyway, we'll, we'll get through it. So um, <laughs> we're going to work with watercolor pencils to sort of, how I do this is I just sort of use that as the outline because I really want to have her eyes be so, so, so vibrant. I end up using... Uh, pastels. I mean, uh, I end up using acrylics and also I end up wetting the watercolor pencil to get a little bit darker color in some instances. But for right now, it's best to just sort of draw in the areas that you're going to be coloring because it's so much easier to erase when you make a mistake. <laughs> so I have that little tiny pencil eraser and that works really well. You can also use a paintbrush with water, like a sort of a stiff, stiff one if you want to. Uh, try not to because that can cause colors to run and make a bigger mess. So usually I just try to erase it and that works pretty good because I've got that matte medium down. Sorry about that, I had to go talk to my dog about all his barking. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so yeah, the matte medium helps. It, it sort of protects the plastic from color becoming too embedded in it if you make a mistake, but it also helps uh, grip the color and hold it. So it's serving two purposes, really as a protector and a sort of prep unit. Anyway, uh, what I'm doing right now is putting some color in the eye with pencils, although I'm going to go over it. I just, I like to do it just... So I can see where I want the color and if it looks the way I want and that kind of thing. It's just not as dark as I like uh, the eyes to end up being. They, I like them to really pop. So I'm using a blue and also uh, sort of a pinkish purple. And just to give it a little extra dimension, I'm making it a sort of a two-color eye. Darker at the top, of course, as usual. 
and then of course black pupils and then of course everybody's favorite eyebrows which are so hard to draw <laughs> I don't know they I can draw them different ways and some ways I like them better than others but uh and I don't have the problem some people complain that they have a problem with getting them like to look the same on both sides I don't have that as much I, it's more that I just struggle to get it to look the way I want it to look with the strokes of the pencil and my hands are not steady enough to do it with paint which I think would look really good because it would be really sharp. But uh, anyway, I'm just sort of going over things now, making them a little bit darker. Just want to make sure I've got it looking the way I want because I can still erase things at this point. But I am going to go over the eye part, most of it anyway, with, uh, with some acrylic paint. I did put a little bit of brown in the nostrils because I like to have that be a little bit darker so you can see there where my camera was like blurry and then I was able to sharp get the picture sharper so uh, I'll get I'll probably get it figured out after four or five videos so I'm also uh, I'm also going to put some uh, watercolor pencil color on her lips and I will end up wetting that and putting some color on with the brush in the crease and in the corners of her mouth to make that a little bit darker. You can use pastels, chalk pastels also. I just prefer using the pencils right now on this particular doll. Sometimes if I want her lips to be a little bit more, uh, less colored looking is I guess the word more natural, I use pastels. So I'm using some chalk pastels now. Uh, to color her cheeks, get a little color in there and across the bridge of her nose. This is the best way to do that. And make sure that you do sort of tap it on a paper towel to get the color off. It's always best to start with less color than you need and build it up. Um, I put in a little bit of brown color for shading around the nose and on the chin and a little bit above the eye. And I'm just using a regular chalk pastels for that. They look nice when you're doing shading or that sort of thing. So now I'm going to pull out the big guns and use some acrylic paint. One thing that I found when I'm doing these Halala dolls to make sure you do is just don't use, don't put a lot of paint on the brush just use a little bit of paint just like with the pastels it's better to get a little color and build it up than it is to get a glob of paint and then you're stuck and you got to try to get it off you may have to take the whole the eye off and then restart but uh, if you just use a little bit and always thin it out with a little bit of water so that it's not so thick because when it is thick like that, sometimes it doesn't flow well and you'll get marks uh, like uh, ridges in the paint where you're putting the paint down because it's so thick. So I really want that white, you know, to stand out. So I did, you know, use the acrylic there and then also the black for the pupil. I tell you what, doing a round pupil is so hard for me. It actually ended up going pretty well this time, but... Uh, I think what the camera is focusing on now is the paint. And you see where I went to the doll, it kind of switched over to the doll. It's, I gotta, I gotta come up with a way to make sure that it stays in focus. But for right now, I'm just sort of learning as I go. So now I've wet the tip of the black watercolor pencil to get a little bit darker color as I color around the iris. I don't want to try to paint that because that, that would be hard for me. I don't think I could do that well. Also, uh, the eyelids over the eyes. Get those a little bit darker. These dolls, I think the eyes are so important. Um, I, I feel like that's sort of the soul that, that gives the doll the look that you want. And I also use some little white stripes in the iris. 
and that you really do want to make sure you don't have too much I just want to have almost draw brush and have it very thin white because if that globs up it, it totally will just destroy what you've painted and it won't look natural and don't worry if you get some of the paint on the pupil as you're painting like the white stri stripes or whatever you just go over that with black and get rid of it I always tend to overdraw and get some white on the pupil part or even if you're doing like the blues and the, the pinks too I can get on it the nice, the nice thing about paints is you can cover things up pretty well I uh, did uh, use some paint to do that crease mark over the eye and managed to do that without messing it up too bad that was good <laughs> and you could do these eyes all kinds of different ways this, this is just uh, this particular doll I've done them I've done these dolls differently almost every time I do them but uh, I have not put lashes on them I've just sort of drawn flex at the edge for lashes I'm not going to draw even draw lashes on her because she's so childlike I just don't think it it looks as good as just having the eye and making sure that it's really bright and and pops so now I'm putting those white streaks in the iris and that's you know just something I like to do I think it it adds something and of course at the very end we have to put the little white dots to make the eyes sparkle and there's lots of ways to do that everybody's got their favorite way to do that <laughs> oh and I like I like have my way I do it with monster high and then I do it a different way with with the halala fake halalas and but uh, I do think the white stripes add a little bit uh, to look, make it look more like a real iris so just make sure that you have a really almost dried out brush and that the paint is very very thin so you want to get a very thin line that's not too white and then it looks really nice yeah so that's coming along I'm going to just use my pointy tool and we're going to make one big dot there and you can also use a ball tool for this that's you know easy I should have done that probably would have made a better rounder look and then I'm going to put two smaller dots opposite that so it's got a sparkle so she's coming along pretty good I'm really liking her and I think there's one more thing I want to add and that's some freckles and we'll just put those right on the bridge of her nose we're not going to bring them down to the chin or anything and I'm using a really diluted brown so it's pretty watery I don't want them to be super dark I want them to be rather light colored and uh, even if they're a little bit watery you can press a paper towel on them and it sort of uh, lightens them blots them a little bit and makes them look a little bit more natural so I think that's gonna give her a really cute little sun-kissed face because I did put the blush on her nose as well as the cheeks so it's uh, not as apparent in the video but up close you can see a sort of a faint little red so it's like you know she just went out and got a little bit of sun and that caused the freckles to pop out and that I think really adds some character to the doll as well as far as the eyes and lips and all that that's I think that looks good and I'm not going to do anything more but I am going to add a little bit I did put some of the blush in the ears but I'm going to put a little bit of the brown uh, in the crease of the ear and then just in the inner part I think that gives a little bit more definition and I do love her cute little her cute little standout ears all right so I took her outside and put some Mr. Super Clear on and now we're going to add some of this clear acrylic paint to her eyes and her lips I got that on Amazon if I'm sure you can probably get it other places too uh, this just adds a little bit more sparkle and 
realism and dimension to the face. It's not all just matte. Uh, for those of you who haven't used Mr. Super Clear, I stayed away from it for a long time just because of the toxicity, but I do have a respirator. I do do it outside, and uh, it really it really does have the best finish. I just have to say it does. <laughs> but given that, please be careful with it. <laughs> so I put a couple, three coats of the clear on eyes and lips to give them some shine. And now that we have that done, we're ready to do a little bit of work with the hair. So I have that split right up at the top and then also at the front part of the scalp. The reason I didn't cut it on the dotted line is I don't want the, uh, I didn't want it to go that far down. I wanted to have the dotted line to be able to put hair on top of. So, you know, I'm not using up the real estate of her forehead for, for that part. I really want to keep as much the hair up top as much as possible. So what I'm doing is I'm looping it. This hair is very, very long. This is alpaca fiber. And it's really long, so I'm just doubling it. And as you can see, uh, when it's going to be pulled apart, then it, it'll be like a part. When it's pulled apart, it'll be a part. Oh, yeah. Very clever. But anyway, so I just doubled it, and I put the loop through the back. But I'm going to cut the loop because I want to glue it down on either side. I really don't want to glue it right in the middle, per se, because I don't want it to come through and make the part hard on the outside. So I'm just putting this uh, E6000 glue on either side of the hair and then I'm spread it out and press it down with my fingers. And if I had focused, you could actually see me doing that. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> yeah. So just press it down until you're sure that it's secure because you will be combing the hair and you don't want it you know, to get pulled out. Although you should be careful with combing the hair anyway. All right, so I'm doing the scalp part now. Put another glob of loop, loop to hair in there, much th thicker pieces. I'm going to do this in two parts and then putting glue on either side of the scalp. Putting right much glue on either side of the scalp and then pressing it down with my fingers. I put just a little bit on top, not enough for it to go through but enough to help hold down the hair and keep it from being pulled out. Now I've got another bunch that I'm going to put in. I did this in two pieces because it was a pretty long area, pretty long uh, cut to fill up. And I don't want to have just this huge glob of hair in there. Now the secret here is to get it as close to the edge as you can without it coming out because you don't want there to be a gap on the scalp when you put this back together between the front part that we did that's, you know, with the face and then this part. You don't want it to be a gap in the part. You want it to be one, look like one long part. All right. So I did actually try to pull this up as close as I could. Uh, now, I, it's not as close as I ended up pulling it because I, I didn't want it to come out as, a, as it was glued. But uh, once I got it together, I was able to pull it with some tweezers, tweezers forward so that it, it ended up looking pretty good. As you'll see, because we're going to get there in a minute. So now uh, I let that dry a while, so I wasn't going to pull it out as I'm working on it. And now I'm putting some E6000 around on top of that cut area so we can put the two pieces back together. Like that and then we can put hair on the rest of the head but getting this part is very important because you got to have a way to cover up the glued hair now I put a pipe cleaner around the hair that I had in the part to get it out of the way because I don't want it to get glue on it messed up but we're gonna start putting hair on the doll's head um, I have lots of videos about this whole process, you know, processing alpaca fiber. Oh my dogs. I hope that's like Amazon Prime or something. I hope there's some reason that they're barking like that. Okay, we're gonna try this again without the dogs barking. So I'm putting glue down 
right pretty much on that dotted line where the hair was pulled out of. And then I take the alpaca fiber and just press it into it at the top. Just enough to make sure that all the fibers get some glue on it. And I think as I was saying before my dogs went berserk that um, I have lots of videos on wigs, making wigs, uh, how to process alpaca fiber, how to glue hair onto wigs, how to glue hair on the scalps. So there's lots of videos out there. I'm not going into maybe as much detail as needed. And also, uh, because my arm is in the way, you're, you're not really able to see anything. <laughs> uh. But what I'm doing is pressing the ends of the alpaca fiber into the glue. Now, the secret to this is to get the glue to end at the place you want it to end. Because if you get it too much, like if you press it and like, you know, at one area it's it's pressed further, so it goes further down the, he the head. And, uh, you know, then it's uneven if you want to pull it up into some sort of updo or ponytail or whatever. So you want to try to get the glue straight across these areas so that it's a natural hairline when you pull it up. Now, naturally, a lot of times you don't pull it up, so, you know, and that's okay. Probably this one won't be pulled up because she has this nice part. We're going to give her a different type of hairdo. But I don't decide that until the very end of my process where I have her, her outfit on her and I have the hair and I decide how I'm going to style the hair to go with the outfit, and blah, 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 blah. You, you get my meaning. All right, so the other secret is when you're getting close to the part area is don't put the glue right next to it. It's got to be just like a, a break and then press the hair down close to the part and then press over into the glue. And that'll spread the glue over to all the fibers without getting it onto the parted hair. If you get it onto the parted hair, then it's going to be hard and clumped up and it's not going to look good. So there's a little bit of... Uh, skill to this is not just putting the hair down but I've done it so many times now pretty much on autopilot now we're just doing rings of hair you know just, we're just going to keep going around the head putting hair until we get to the very top and then at that point you just want to make sure that you're uh getting as close to the parted hair as possible without getting glue on it. That's going to give you the most natural look once you take the parted hair down. So this parted hair is going to cover up that last layer of glued hair. So somehow or other, you've got to figure out a way when you do hair on dolls to cover up that last glued area. And I like that this is... Uh, this hair is so long. I mean, even with me cutting it in half, it's still on this doll, it's still pretty long. So it's working really well. And uh, after I let it dry for a while, this glue is waterproof. So you can wash the hair, you can comb it, you know, you can do whatever you need to do. And it really holds up pretty well. And if you use a white glue like Elmer's, uh, which is water soluble, then you're going to get your hair is going to start coming out if you try to wash it or whatever. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you don't ever plan to wash it, then Elmer's is fine. But uh, with the alpaca fiber, it really depends on the condition that I get it in. This was pretty clean and separated into locks. It did need to be combed out. I used just using a pet wire comb there to comb it. But uh, otherwise, it's pretty clean sometimes they have a lot of oil on them though all right so I've let it dry for a while I went took a nap and <laughs> so I'm using that metal tool there to go in the middle of that hair that I pulled inside of the scalp the scalp to make the part and uh, you may have to mess with it a little bit to get it even get you know equal amounts of hair on either side and then what you want to do is just comb it into the hair that you glued so that it, it looks, you know, like it's all just one head of hair and looks natural. So I'm not going to try to style it right now. I'm just going to 
halfway comb it and pull it back and put it back into the pipe cleaner. I'm going to keep it out of the way because uh, the next step is to work on a dress. Now I'm going to do that in the next video, but you guys are going to help me. You're going to play a role in this. And I'll explain that at the end of the video. So don't stop watching yet. You have a role to play in this doll's outfit. But first, I just want to show you, this is a regular Blythe doll top. I'm not going to make her, her blouse, uh, but I want to show you the sizing in case you're interested in this doll and what type of clothes will fit it. So this is a regular Neo Blythe size, it's basically like a t-shirt. And I also had another Blythe shirt, but the sleeves was were too long. I thought it actually would have fit her better because it was stretchy and I think it would have maybe been a, not quite as big as this shirt. That shirt's too big. So next I want to try a midi Blythe blouse and I think this one is going to work. I did have to pop her hands off to get it on but not a problem. You just pop them on, pop them off. And then I also popped her shoulder off while I was at it but that also pops right back on. I was just snipping off a thread there. So that blouse actually fits her perfectly. Uh, I don't think all midi clothes would, but that one particularly does. So when you're looking at the clothing, you got to choose, you know, based on the size, maybe midi to, to Blythe. Now, definitely she's got Blythe size feet. She does not have midi size feet. This is a shoe I was thinking about. What I want to do is make a little skirt to go with this blouse that has suspenders with it that go over her shoulders. So uh, I want to make the shoes match the skirt. And I was thinking about doing that. But then I thought, no, this, you know, this blouse is really cute with that little brown bow and the, the black buttons. So I think some little boots would do well, like some little brown boots. And then we'll come up with the cute thing and I was uh, when I was filming this I didn't realize at first I thought these were Blythe shoes but they're actually midi Blythe shoes I don't know why I had I had like a pack of five of them I don't know why I have five of them because I don't I only have like a couple of midis but anyway I have a pair of socks that have a little bit of lace on them and I did have this exact same pair of boots in the Blythe size so that's going to work, especially with socks on. That Those midi shoes will definitely not fit. So if you're going to get shoes for this particular doll, she's got pretty big feet compared to the size. So yeah, yeah, this is definitely better. And just to show you, to compare, there's the midi boot versus the Blythe Neo size boot. All right, so I'm going to put her socks and her shoes on. And then we're going to come back to the part of the video that you guys are going to help me with for the next video, which will be her making the outfit for her, the little skirt. Okay, so don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. I need your help. All right, so I put the shoes and the socks on her and, the, and she's got the blouse. You can see how cute that looks. That's just adorable, right? <laughs> So I want you guys to help me decide which fabric to make the skirt out of. So I've got several pieces of fabric here that I think color-wise will go with it. But I want you to choose. And we're going to number these one through six. And when you make a comment on the video, just put the number that you want, you feel would be best for the skirt with the suspenders. So I have the same color. I'll make little straps out of the material too. All right, so she'll have a little skirt with the suspenders to go over the blouse. And it's got to go with the brown and the, the boots and everything. All right, so we're going to number them, and you put the number that you choose in your comment under the video. And that's what I'm going to use to make the outfit. So this will be the first one. So I want to kind of fold it so that you can see how it would look as a skirt. So you can see with the boots. So this will be number one. So you want to think about 
uh, the other thing about it is like which print is good like some of the prints are a little bit bigger than others which colors do you think most go with the brown of the boots and the tie I just pulled out everything I had that I thought would go with brown and uh, I thought it would be fun if you guys helped me decide all right this is going to be number two yeah all right Make sure you look at how that goes with everything. That's number two. All right, this next one is a little bit lighter fabric. This is going to be number three. Sort of a beige with brown flowers. That's number three. See, I already know which one I want, but <laughs> I'm going to do which one you guys want. This one, uh, it's not necessarily brown, but it has yellow, which I think goes with the brown really well. So this is right number four. So that's number four. Yeah. I have to take a good look at it. And then for number five, this is a real fallish material that's got some olive, some brown, and some rust colors in it. I'm trying to fold it up, but it's a bigger piece of material, so it's a little harder for me to fold it. All right, that's five. Number five. You may have to go through and watch this again so you can decide which which colors you like. And this one is kind of completely off the wall, but it's, it's kind of a fun print. I really have it. I don't think it really has any brown in it. Maybe a little. No. No, but it does have yellow, which, yeah, yellow goes with it. All right, so that's six. <laughs> All right, so we have six fabrics. Make a comment and put number one through six for your favorite. And that's the fabric I'm going to use to make her skirt in the next video. So that's it for this video. We did the face, we did the hair, mostly we did the hair, and we talked about how we're going to do the clothes. So that's, that's our custom Holala fake for now. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you'll be back for the next one. And if you haven't already, please be sure and subscribe, because I don't want you to miss a thing. Thanks, <laughs> and bye.